Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Madeline Claire Weiss about strategies for combating workplace stress. Madeline Claire Weiss, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. I'm excited to have a fun conversation about a really important and serious topic. We're going to be focusing on workplace stress and strategies for dealing with and combating the stress that we all feel uh, in the workplace, both as leaders trying to just manage and deal with everything, but also in helping our people as they're trying to deal with the complexities and, and difficulties of life and managing their own anxieties and stresses, um, that some of which are completely outside of the workplace, but influence the way they do their work and other stressors that just arise from the nature of the work that they're doing uh, at work. As we get started, I wanted to share Madeline's bio with everybody. Madeline Claire Weiss is a Harvard trained licensed psychotherapist, mindset expert, and board certified executive career life coach who helps people master their minds so they can maintain and enjoy satisfaction and success in all areas of their lives. She is co author in the handbook of stressful transitions across the lifespan and author of the new release, Getting to Great Five Step Strategy for Work and Life. Madeline is a former group mental health practice administrative director, a corporate chief organizational development officer, and associate director of the anatomical gift program at Harvard Medical School, where she spoke before the Joint Committee on the Status of Women. As a corporate trainer, Madeline designed and delivered programs for such diverse organizations as Harvard Medical School, Legal Services Corporation, and AARP. She has been featured on NBC, Bold TV, Fox TV, appears frequently as a podcast guest expert, including Major Lindsay and Africans Erasing the Stigma, has written for the Thrive Global Authority Magazine's editor list, Up Journey, My Perfect Finance Advisor, and conducted webinars for such organizations as the American Bar Association and Harvard Law School Association, MA. Madeline is a chapter co-author in the Handbook of Stressful Transitions Across the Lifespan. It is a real pleasure, Madeline, to have you on the podcast. What a tremendous background and career, and I'm excited to have this conversation. Uh, Before we really launch in, anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context? No, I was smiling through that because I was thinking that was enough to give me imposter syndrome. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody knows about that, right? Yeah, but hey, you know, you you uh, you clearly have the credentials and you have the background. You you have the street cred with me, so you don't need to feel like an imposter. <laughs> I was just listening to that. Thank you, thank you. I pulled some statistics for all of you um, on work stress, and it will um, segue into my why. If you have any interest in that, yes, please. Yeah. So some of what I have pulled out here, and I have a little cheat sheet in front of me, that 77, I think this was a Deloitte study, that 77% of all professionals had reported suffering burnout. And uh, you pointed out that how everything is connected to everything else. I could hear that in what you were saying, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. So yeah, with significant impact, this burnout to the quality of their work and their lives everywhere around their work for couples and parents uh, reporting um, more suffering and strife than ever before, obviously with the um, pandemic, 
but not necessarily limited to that. Organizations are spending hundreds of billions of dollars a year on workplace stress related issues. And there are over 100,000 work stress related deaths per year. And when I was 15 years old, my father was one of them. So um, mouthy little girl that I was, I went around for years believing he died of me until one day at the cemetery having a conversation with my mother. Um, she said, no, honey, it wasn't you. It was work. So that tells you everything you need to know. You know, I started out in a microbiology, clinical chemistry, hematology, serology laboratory, went on from there to the USDA Biological Control Lab and um, cardiac catheter monitor research lab. So I started there, but little, little by little by, you know, there was this calling to do this work that I do now. I feel that if I can help save one little boy or girl's mommy or daddy or anybody at all for that matter, I'm doing what I'm here to do, so. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, and, you know, I, I just can't even imagine um, the, the, the trauma, the, the difficulty that that must be as a young child to lose a parent at any time for any reason. Um, and you, you highlight the importance of this issue because burnout, certainly that's one manifestation of stress and anxiety at the workplace. No. Um, but burnout, uh, is reportedly on the rise, uh, really, uh, at, at, uh, all time high levels over this past year, people are dealing with and trying to, to, to function within a, uh, an environment where they're, everything's melding together and and they have uncertainty at work, they have uncertainty at home and in their communities, public health crisis, everything related to that. It, it's just a tremendous challenge and a tremendous burden uh, for individuals, certainly, and for leaders who are trying to figure out how they can support their people, how they can, uh, you know, despite the, the challenges that people are facing, still, you know, pull together a cohesive team of people that can, you know, work well together and, and function well and, and, and produce uh, and innovate. I, I mean, it's it's just an incredible challenge. And challenge and opportunity. Sure. And so let's talk about the that piece. Uh, certainly, you know, your your book. You talk about strategies on how to cope and deal, uh, and and that's one way of looking at the opportunity. Um, but there's you know this all these difficulties. If we can, you know put our, our framing on in such a way that we can look at them as, as a chance to learn and grow, uh, there, there are tremendous opportunities all around us uh, during this past year. So what are those, some of the, those opportunities that you see? Well, I'm noticing in the people that I work with, a lot of the angst is because they're not learning and because they're not growing. You know, the, the bird wants to fly and the tree wants to grow and so do we. And I think that's one of the, the best kept secrets that it's not your boss and it's not the spouse and it's not the weather that there's just like I was doing this and this and this and this and felt, you know, heard this sort of calling to be doing something else. When we get quiet enough inside and I teach people how to do that, um, we can hear that guidance that helps us to grow so people don't feel so stuck. You know, humans have this enormous tendency to blame persons, places, things, circumstances. So um, Sonia Lubomirsky in The How of Happiness did a lot of research and she's got this pie chart. And she shows that only 10% of our happiness hinges on all those things we blame everything on. She says that 50% 50 of it 
is like your happy stat, you know, for weight, everybody has like kind of a set point. Well, for happiness, we have kind of a set point also. And then there's this 40% where we can really make a difference in our lives. And I notice my clients doing so well in making a difference in their lives. So at some point, not too long ago, I said to myself, self, what is going on here that is going so well? Like what accounts for this? Because the, they're all so different from each other in age and ethnicity and occupation and gender. And I have such a varied background with the business degree and the psychodynamic training and licensing and all of that. And by the way, I don't even know if I mentioned to you, I've been studying um, Advaita Vedanta pre-Hindu for over 20 years. Not a lot of people know that. Well, now a lot of people know. <laughs> um, so my toolkit is so diverse, it's so varied. And then the people I work with are so different. So I said, what's the common denominator here? And that was when I came up with this, these five steps, the five step strategy, these are these five steps that they all go through um, that accounts for the smile. Yeah, that's great. And let, we'll get into those uh, here in just a moment. Uh, but I did want to zoom in on something you were talking about. So, so clearly, we have a choice when we face difficulties on how we're going to respond to those challenges, For whether sure. it's in our personal life, you know, our home life with the spouse, with children, um, community, friends, whatever, or it's in the workplace with a boss, coworkers. Uh, there's one certainty in life that I found um, more certain than anything else besides, you know, uh, death, I suppose, is, is that uh, life is going to be messy and we're going to have a lot of surprises. Um, and so regardless of our very best intentions and our most careful planning, things will be thrown at us. Uh, life is not fair. And so uh, we will have to deal with stuff. Everyone has their stuff. Everyone has to deal with stuff. And then we we get to choose though, how we respond to the messiness, the complexities, the challenges, even the abuses that we have to endure at the hands of other people who might abuse us, exploit us, take advantage of us, whatever. And in the workplace, it's the same thing. Are there bad bosses? Absolutely. Are there bad bosses that abuse and exploit their people? Absolutely. Are there, hor are there horrible um, employees that can be really difficult to deal with in the workplace? Absolutely. But for the most part, most people are trying to go through their lives, trying to survive, trying to learn, trying to grow, trying to just deal with everything that's going around them. They have good intentions. They don't even realize when they're hurting people around them. And so if we can uh, face the challenges with uh, a generous heart, recognizing that probably for most people, they're not trying to hurt us. They're not trying to harm us. Um, and regardless of what those external, you know, inputs are to, you know, the harm that we may feel, we still get to choose on how we respond to it. And if we have that framing, then we, you know, it's, it's, it's part of what it, it means to have a growth mindset, because then we, we know that regardless of our circumstances, we can still lean into it. We can still, um, use yeah. it and leverage it as an opportunity for the next, you know, big chance or opportunity that we might have in life to do something even greater, more grand than what we've been doing up to this point. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, 
champions of talent and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. You sound like Viktor Frankl. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Should. In between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our choice on how we respond. And with that choice comes our growth and our freedom, which is essentially what you just said, which is why I said you sound like Viktor Frankl. The issue, I think, and the opportunity is that not a lot of people secure that space. So for many of us, particularly the more and more stressed people feel, there's stimulus and there's reaction and there isn't space. So there's, um, Dan Siegel has the hand model of the brain. Can your viewers uh, see us or is this audio? Uh, both. So if they're on YouTube, they'll be able to see us. If, if it's okay. just the, the podcast, it'll just be audio. Okay, so I'll try to describe it too. So this is the hand model of the brain. And this is the center of the brain, the area where the amygdala is. So that's the thumb. If you're making a fist out there for the listeners and your thumb is going wacko, it doesn't like what's going on out there. It's either feeling threatened or it's feeling way too excited about something that it thinks is positive. But in any case, it's reacting. And when that happens, according to Dan Siegel, and my clients find this very useful, it knocks the executive functioning brain offline. So where it would be better if this were calm enough that there could be brain integration. So the reactive part of the brain could say there's something going on here. And if it's not so out of control that it knocks it offline, the higher brain is integrated with it and can say, thank you for letting me know, I'll take it from here. So you have your higher brain, the smarter part of you or me or anyone driving the bus. We don't want this flipping out thing driving the bus. So it's data, but not directives. And when we quiet the mind enough, and if we have time, we can do a 30 second mindset reset that kicks it right upstairs to the higher brain. So you have your higher brain in charge, but you need to be quiet enough inside for this to happen. People worry that they're going to go brain dead and they're not going to be clear and they're not going to be focused. And that is exactly the opposite of what happens, actually. And my clients tell me so. I had, yeah. Um, well, and, and you've already referred to it a couple of times uh, just in our conversation, but you have to find ways, you have to have opportunities to quiet your mind, uh, to, to, to take the, the opportunity to self-reflect and to just sit with yourself if you hope to be able to deal with these stressors, the, the anxieties that we have and to find a kind of a mindfulness, you know, a peaceful place uh, amidst the turmoil that can only happen as we, as we quiet ourselves. And, and you can do simple breathing exercises to help with that, get outdoors, walk your dog, whatever. Like there's so many different ways to do it, but you got to do it and you have to do it consistently every day. Uh, and it, and if you do, I mean, it, I, I recognize it does take a little bit of commitment and time, but not a ton of time and just some small, simple things can make a big, big difference. 30 seconds. By the way, I just posted this morning. I, I post weekly on, you mentioned the dog. Did you know that they did a study where if people had their pets with them, or there were three groups. You either had your pet with you or you were just thinking about your pet or there was no pet. 
And of the three groups, the ones who had their pets with them and also or thought about their pets could generate more goals and more confidence in their ability to achieve them than the petless people. I thought was amazing. You want to upgrade your your goal setting and achievement. Hang on. Well, I mean that that certainly uh, strikes true for me. I have two dogs. Everyone who listens to the podcast knows I talk about my dogs from time to time. I have two dogs. We go on at least a couple walks every day, and uh, it's like you know the best part of my day. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 wonderful. Do you do you gaze into each other's eyes? Because that was part of what I posted. <laughs> No, um, I'm yeah, there is, there I, is- I'm not sure I gaze into their eyes. Um, like my wife likes me to gaze into her eyes, but we do look at each other. <laughs> well, apparently it increases the oxytocin for the dog also. If it's the kind of dog who will let you do it. So I have a, can you, can you see the dog there? Uh, yeah. Yep. That's. Raphael Leonardo. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> he likes to eye gaze. So. Well, well, that's excellent. So there's a clear why behind this. It's, I think it's important from a human standpoint, from a moral ethical standpoint, that we take care of ourselves, that we take care of our people. But there's also a business case for this too. When when you take care of your people, they produce better. They they work better. They you. you you know, they'll be, they'll be more effective. They'll have better goals, like you said. Um, but let's, let's dig in in our last bit of time together and maybe the next five minutes. Let's dig into some of those strategies that you talk about in your book and even the 30-second mindset reset. Okay, two things real quick. The first line of the book is, a great life depends on a great fit between who we are in the environment in which we work and live. The five-step strategy is derivative of that statement. So it takes you through that statement, um, knowing who you are, how you can find that, and then how you explore. And it's an acronym, g.r.e.a.t. And we don't have time for that now, but I do want to give you the 30-second mindset reset because... I just think that's everybody's best friend forever. To leaders out there, I totally agree. There's a book called Grounded. Bob Rosen wrote that. And it's how it's the same analogy as when you're on an airplane and before you help anyone else, you have to put the mask on yourself if the plane is going down. It's the same thing for leaders that we are an instrument for the use of others. And we have to keep our instrument clean and fit and fine-tuned like fit as a fiddle kind of a thing if as a responsibility to those who are counting on us. So this little 30-second thing, by the way, we don't actually need to do it right now. There's a, um, on my website at madelineweiss.com. If you scroll down, there's a box that says complimentary mind management exercises. And if you click on power breathing, and I call it that power breathing, it's really polyvagal breathing, but I call it power breathing because I really do think that it empowers all of us for everything calling on us. So it's a one sheet and it'll tell you exactly how to do this. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, and maybe in, the, in a, the last couple of minutes that we have, any other highlights from the book, strategies that people could start to adopt right away to start making a dif- difference? Yeah, there's another one on there called Focus and Release. You know, people have, a, and I learned this firsthand when I first started studying these things, we have a very hard time putting one thing down and moving to the next. And because of that, it's like we're walking around with a sack of heavy rocks on our back. So you do the first thing when you wake up in the morning, the first task, whatever that is. And then instead of putting that down, you're still thinking about that one while you start the next one. 
And by the end of the day, people wonder why they're so exhausted because they've been carrying this around all day. So the other exercise, help yourself to both. There, there are more than that on there, but I like these two very much. Power breathing and focus and release. Focus and release teaches us how to put one thing down. So at um, when I was working at Harvard, I did a four week module um, on managing your mind for executives and professionals there. And one of the women was from Harvard Health Publications. And she said to me, oh my God, oh my God, I found this mistake on our masthead that without these techniques, I would have never found. And what that saved her, not just in angst, but I always like to say, I help people get more hours in the day because she saved so much time by finding that before that went out. So this ability to really, really focus, to be where you are, when you are, to focus on the working surface and all of that is in the book. So. Well, that, that's wonderful. And I, I completely agree. I think that's that's one of the biggest barriers I see uh, in leaders uh, being effective. Uh, so many leaders end up kind of running around like chickens with their heads cut off, trying yeah. to put out fires constantly. And, yeah. and I get it. It's like, it's hard. You're dealing with lots of stuff and there are going to be times of crisis and there are going to be times um, where things are chaotic, but it doesn't need to be that way all the time. And and I think a big reason for that is for what you were just describing. Uh, people have a really hard time and it's, it's, it's natural. Like we have to train ourselves not to do this. We, yeah. we, we carry that stuff around with us and then we just have this mental burden. I talk about the mental bandwidth that we take up with all that stuff that we just need to be able to, to focus, work on whatever we're working on, set it aside, transition, move to the next thing. And it seems like the, the most successful leaders, well, really the most productive people generally, but certainly the most successful leaders are the ones that are able to do that consistently and do it well. Well, Madeline, it has been a real pleasure talking with you today. I want to be respectful of your time. I notice we're, we're drawing close to the end of our time together. But before we close, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your book, where they can find it, uh, and then give us the last word on the topic for today. So um, my website is my central spot. It's the easiest way to get to me. So it's madelaineweiss.com. The blog posts are there. The free exercises are there. And certainly um, I would love to hear from anyone who would like to have a complimentary strategy session with me. I think largely in terms of strategy, you made a good point there. It's all natural. Everything that we're doing, even the stuff that we're um, tripping over ourselves has helped us to get to where we are. We just need to know what's in there in that toolkit that we all have and to know which tool to pull out when, how to use these things well. So that's kind of what I work with people on, accepting everything that we are and then uh, learning to put it to the very best use for ourselves and all the people counting on us. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Madeline. It has been a real pleasure talking with you. The Thank time you. flew by. Uh, I would love to have you back sometime and we can continue the conversation. Love and I, I would encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Madeline, check out her book, check out her website, find out more about what she can do to help you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe 
and that you have a great week.